Hi, David Barron here. Uh, I wanted to uh, talk about, uh, for the University of Hyp Hypnotism, I want to talk about the whole concept of there being a inflexible personality. There is a belief that we, well, it's very popular in our culture. That is, uh, when you are born, you're born uh, from a mold and nothing changes uh, very much uh, from the time of birth to death. I want to propose something that I think is uh, slightly different, which is we are constantly reevaluating and changing our personality. One of the studies that is often quoted, and I think actually misquoted, is something referred to as the, uh, the marshmallow test. And if you look it up, Google it, you'll find out about it. Uh, some very small children were around the age of four, five, six, seven, were given the opportunity to sit in a room with a marshmallow. And they were told that if they cannot, if they can withhold eating that marshmallow for 15 minutes, they would get two marshmallows. And to no one's real surprise, many of the young children could not resist that. Now, what is often quoted is those, pe those young children who couldn't delay their gratification grew up being less successful than the children who could wait the 15 minutes and delay their gratification. Now, unfortunately, that is only half of the study. And in fact, it, when you listen to the rest of the study, you find that the conclusion is quite different. Those same children who could not withhold, who could not delay their gratification, were given a very simple technique. They were told, just pretend that that is made out of cardboard, or it's just a picture, or that it's not even there. And just given that very simple technique, many of the young children who were able to, were unable to wait 15 minutes, were able to wait 15 minutes from that point forward. This wasn't even a skill. This was a technique that was given them. And, and what that proves is that, you know, those, those parts of the personality that we think are perhaps impetuous or uh, uh, excessively spontaneous or can't delay gratification, those things can definitely be changed and altered. Not by anything dramatic, but just by learning a very simple technique or method. I mean, it, as I say, this was not even hypnosis. It wasn't even a skill. It was just a technique. Now, what I have found is that people often, when they come and work with me, they come with an, a limitation that their skill, their, their personality is set. They believe that they are perpetually perhaps anxious in front of a group or they don't have the social skills that they need and they, th they think they're limited by their personality. And there are some very simple, um, dramatic, uh, hypnotic techniques that change their personality. I'm in a conversation with a group of people who actually are working to create very positive alter personalities. These are personalities that are, <laughs> interestingly, uh, these are personalities that are completely separate from the main personality and come up spontaneously in the right situation. And they can be totally different from the person's host personality. Yet though, they are also completely supportive. So there are some very positive techniques to help change people that don't even have to be that dramatic. It is entirely possible. I have an entire technique that's a, a modification of what uh, my mentor Jeffrey Stevens called the black room technique. And with it, we sit down and we design the ideal personality. Within the course of that one session, they leave with that new personality. They feel different. They look at their old behaviors and they say to themselves, I'm not that person anymore. In fact, as additional proof that we are, in fact, always dynamic and changing, just consider five, 10 years, maybe 20 years earlier, your life, how you were that long ago. And consider the limitations you had, the fears, the anxieties, the hesitations. 
And you will probably agree that you are not that person anymore. So that part of you, your personality, did change. This is also true when you think of, you look back and you think of the positive things that you don't have anymore. You're not that person anymore. But that doesn't mean it can't be regained. So what I want you to consider is how personalities can change, how they can, in fact, be very dynamic. One of the reasons that we hold on to the myth that a personality is fixed is just because it's simple. It's because uh, we as human beings don't like to think a whole lot. And if personalities are constantly changing, we have to reevaluate everyone at the moment as opposed to hold them into a very fixed, solid box. And I'm all about getting people out of their, their box and out of their assumptions. I want you to think particularly about those people who you might have heard of who have committed 20 years ago a very serious, a very heinous crime. For many of us in this culture, it is very hard to look past that and realize that the person has changed. Often they have. I'm not, I'm not denying the fact that sometimes they don't change, that sometimes they still have those very, those very hurtful intentions and those unfortunate aspects of their personality persisting. But what you will find is those people after the course of, of many years do change in one way or another. They are not the person that they are. So if you have any questions about this, I would, uh, I'm writing uh, a paper that sort of describes uh, my modification of this, uh, creating an alternate personality and, and bringing it, bring it into, uh, into uh, existence for hypnosis clients. Uh, if you have any questions about this, uh, let me know. Uh, post them in the comments below, and thank you very much. It's been fun. Take care. Bye.